Hello everyone. My name is Alexandra and I'm a member of Advanced Marketing Team. Um, I will be guiding you today through this webinar, and I hope you're all having a great day. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you all here and it's amazing that uh, after first such an amazing webinar to see that it was just a, just the beginning of this amazing journey. So I hope we will all enjoy it today. So many people here. Wow, it's amazing. It, it was al almost, I think, 260 registered people. So that's, I, I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> uh, and also it was amazing to see that you are from so many different countries. Maybe can you let me know in a chat where are you from? I think it will be interesting to see where are you from. Wow, Sweden, okay, Poland. I saw so many interesting countries. So I guess uh, we're here worldwide. England, amazing, Italy. So while we're waiting uh, for last part participants to join us here today, I would like to share some exciting developments uh, connected to our software Adbian. Uh, about Adbian, uh, Andre will be talking more about in the second part of this presentation. And um, Recently, we have launched a component platform where you can actively engage in discussion about Adbian's future. This platform is designed for sharing news, discussing new futures, collecting valuable user feedback and offering exclusive content for community members. Uh, it's a great way to stay updated uh for the la latest developments and to contribute on our software's growth uh, it would be amazing if you join us i will share quickly a link for the community so you can register it's in the chat right now so uh i will pin it and it will stay there for the whole webinar so don't hesitate to um, connect through our community platform uh, in terms of uh, software development uh, adbn now offers support for a wider range of tomograph types ensuring comp compatibility with all major manufacturers this means there is no matter uh, which tomograph you use uh, Adbian can seamlessly integrate into your evaluation process. And uh, also don't forget to follow us on uh, social media to keep the conversation going even after today's webinar. I can see there is already over 100 people here. That's amazing. Um, so I think we can uh, officially start today's uh, webinar, which topic is Tree Biomechanics Unveiled, Exploring the Latest Development. Uh, welcome everyone again. And if you came here later, my name is Alexandra and I will be guiding you through uh, today's event. Uh, quickly to go through today's schedule, so you know what's coming up. First presentation will be from our main guest, Gerard Passola. And his uh, presentation topic is three features that affect crown stability. After that, uh, he will be followed by Andre Kolarik and his presentation at Bien Applied Biomechanics uh, Practical Guide and Case Studies. He will be joined by two special guests. So 
stay tuned for that. And after those two amazing presentations, there will be space for your questions. And also stay tuned because I will be revealing a topic and guests of our third webinar. So if you want to know and register in beforehand, we will be um, sharing it on our social media. We will be sharing the link for the registration in the end. Okay, a few more people are connecting. But I think there is no need for me to talk any longer. <laughs> and I would just want to thank you for spending time with us today. And I will ask our first speaker, Gerard Pasola. I will quickly introduce you, Gerard. Uh, so he, Gerard is a uh, figure in the field of arboriculture on a global scale. He is a brain behind Dr. Arbel, where he is committed to lead search, uh, research and development on modern ar arboriculture. Uh, he specializes in uh, implementation of trees in urban soils, risk studies and analysis, management of singular trees, and design and execution of special work for special trees. He's also uh, sharing his knowledge through uh, courses, conferences, and publications uh, at na national and international level. Maybe do you want to add something, Gerard, or please, uh, you can start your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with Advian uh, in this collaboration. I saw uh, well-known uh, people on the on the list of participants. So I'm um, uh, welcome to everybody and a uh, big huge eh, to the friends. Okay, this is uh, I'm trying to be very resume uh, a, a longer conference, but I try to focus on some on some things that uh, normally uh, people doesn't really mm, looks uh, uh, or doesn't have a, a very uh, an, uh, enough interest, I think. No? When we evaluate trees, we think mostly on strong biomechanics, no? and we have developed systems and, um, and tools to inspect and to prevent uh, the strong failure. But if we look on the, uh, on the city uh, problems, normally the 70% of the branch of, of things that happen in the city is related to branch failure, and only 10% is it's related to trunk breaking. But mostly of the courses formation about biomechanics, it's all around trunk breaking, no. So uh, I think I we miss some uh, of the information that the the uh, of the incidents that happen in the city, and I'm just trying to um, share my inf my my impressions about how what is the reason why some sometimes we have this amount of branches falling without any explanation. Mm. We are iterated when we make uh, studies on biomechanics to evaluate reaction boot. Reaction boot is the way through um, the way that you, you use to understand the tree and uh, detect the problems on the tree. No, but uh, we forget sometimes the, that the first step on the, the answer to the problems of biomechanics is the optimization of the tier structure. No, and I'm going to try to share this information that I think is important. No. We are going to think uh, on these four uh, four uh, uh, factors. Uh, uh, the first uh, it's avoid moments associated to weight. The second factor uh, that we're going to speak is aerodynamic factor and resonance that avoid the the moment associated to the wind. Then we will speak a little bit of an isotropy, an isotropy of wood, and then slenderness and roughness of trees. And these four elements that normally doesn't happen isolated that it's works in combination, it's, uh, in my experience, can explain a lot, a lot of uh, casualty uh, incidences that happen on trees. Mm -hmm. Normally, we know that uh, it uh, can have a different safety factor, and they tre the trees have a, a, um, adaptive growth, don't want to be too much uh, rogue, don't want to be too much slender, because a combination of both is who designed the real the real tree, no? There are uh, a tree that can be with a big safety factor, but this is less photosynthetic capacity or a, a big capacity on the photosynthetic, it means less uh, safety factor, no? So trees are mostly in the middle and uh, 
always try to reduce the cost of the biomechanic. And this is some of the drones that I use it is from Matic. I think Matic is the, the, the guy that explains really good the optimization on trees. And this is, I'm going to use a lot of this, uh, these drones. No? The first step that the tree used uh, it's to reduce the, uh, the the cost of the mechanics is uh, try to uh, avoid the weight, the moment of weight. And all the trees we know that we the growth trying to reduce the moment, the lever arm of the of the structures to uh, reduce the moment forces. And we can see how mm, uh, the trees try to find out also how to put the the center of the gravity in the center of the axis to reduce the capacity to the the cost of of being you know, too much far away and, and having a force. And we see one and another time that the tree looks to find the place where the cost of the organic is less expensive. Also, they make really ext extraordinary structures to re reconduct the, 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 the trunk structure to reduce these moments. But the tree cannot always do that. Uh, sometimes the tree don't have place to put the branches on the right on the right place and needs to put uh, these branches too much lateral. And so it means that the the the, the weight uh, it, it's going to be increased for the uh, for the incapacity of put the branches on the right place. And also they they, they have uh, the Physiology it goes farther than the, the mechanics. It means that the, if the tree has to choose between physiology and mechanics, we'll always choose the, the physiology. So um, the, pre, the, the tree prefers to be risky but alive than uh, uh, more safe but dead. So the trees will always to put the physiology in the first point, and it means that sometimes the, the laterality of the trees can increase and the weight moment can be really, really hard. No? When we analyze uh, big big trees, normally, especially with the singular ones, we have these moments of laterality very very big, and we don't see any defect on the on the on the junctions on the union of the branches. But we have to be aware that the weight can be itself a problem at the end, and we can get these kind of breakings. That uh, it's mostly made only for the extreme weight, put it too much far away on the on the on the structure of the tree. So. Uh, this, if you apply that, if we apply that on the uh, on the cities, it means that we have to be aware and put uh, make lateral reductions on the trees that can have a, a high development lateral to look for the for looking for the light. No, um, of course, all the things that we are going to speak today, if there are a defect on the union or defect on the structure, this is going to be worse. So. Um, uh, but uh, itself, the weight can be a problem, and we have to be aware analyzing trees. Okay, the weight is one of the first uh, optimization uh, or the fight against the weight. The weight is the first one of the first optimization that the tree is made, but uh, it's not it's not the only one. The most important one optimization is about aerodynamics. Aerodynamic is one of the factors that the tree really try to find out and detect with the mechano sensing, always feeling what is that what is the what is happening in related to, to the wind. And we have this incredible picture of this eagle going inside the sea, and we can see that the shape that the, the eagle gets to go inside and, and, and feed the fishes. Uh, it's very special. It's unique shape. If you open the wings going inside the water, you will destroy yourself. So the tree in the same uh, makes the same and we have to when we analyze the, the 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 trees we have to find out if the tree is having these strategies of reduction of the level arm uh, uh, associated with the wind not only the tree can have a uh, 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 habituate uh, a usual wind, and so the tree will change the, the branch structure but mostly the trees have a capacity a flexibility on the crown that lets the tree reduce reduce the, the 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 shape optimize the shape and get a special shape to be less uh, uh, less costly uh, being exposed to the wind this is a nice round that uh, some uh, students of uh, make in a, in a project that we do is a it's a fitolaka uh, look it from the top and you can see how the shape of the crown is very close to the wing of the of the plane uh, you can see the arrows. It means the 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 a bit uh, the winds, no, that come from the north and from the south. You can see how the shape of the crown. If you look at from up that from the top, it looks like a you know a front attack where the where the wind goes, no. In the in the in the um, 
the yellow the yellow uh, zone it means the illumination of the sun so that we have these both shapes one for the wind another one for the for the insulation and both are connected because uh, Three doesn't know about mathematics theoretically, but in the practical, they know that there are a, a force, there are a wind, there are, uh, and there are, they know that there are different shapes that can affect uh, 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 differently the, the the force of the wind on the crown. So they really they find out the, the way how to reduce this cost of being more effective on wind on wind uh, on wind force. You no, know? we know that. Um, there are aerodynamic, aerodynamic factor. The tree has two really two aer aerodynamic factors. One is the uh, resting aerodynamic factor, where the tree is uh, it's getting the, the the light for make photosynthesis, and this is very bad aerodynamic factor when the tree feels the wind. All the structure of the of the of the of the um, of the tree will be modified to reduce the aerodynamic factor to the order normally about 1.3, uh, uh, 0.3, sorry, and, and to reduce the, the, the wind force on, on the crown. No? This is special, uh, I'm, I like this, this picture, this study about the aerodynamics of leaves, and this is a, a leaf of Iliodendron. No? When you look at a leaf of Iliodendron, the shape is very strange because it has these special wings on laterals, no? and some people think that this is just for aesthetic or just curiosity of nature, but if you analyze the leaves, you can see that the, the these lateral wings are made to let the leaves of the Liodendron to make this pipe when the winds come. So Liodendron has the one of the most big proportion between the surface of photosynthetic and less aerodynamic factor, and this is made by this special shape on the on the leaves. No, uh, it's very important that. Uh, we let the tree be like that in the leaves. In the case of the leaves, but uh, normally, uh, but some cases, uh, gardens that study how to prune trees, they have a, a close mind about how the trees are. And imagine that you uh, study the trees, and the people show you that the the shape of the trees have a, have a you know a fuse shape, and and you decide that the little doesn't fit on the what you know about leaves on the shape of the leaves so you decide to cut eh, all the leaves of the liodendron to put out these wings because the trees are not like that so if you decide to prune i to cut all this all the leaves of the liodendron what it will happen is in the first wind the tree doesn't let uh, the leaves doesn't let uh, the, make this pipe and probably the, the the some branches of the liodendron will 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 break because if you destroy the shape of the leaves, the tree doesn't doesn't uh, support the wind correctly. So it's stupid to think that we are going to cut all the leaves of the liodendron because you don't don't understand why you're done in that way. But mo we don't do it in the leaves, but we, we do it sometimes in the branches. So if we let nature be like it is, normally we are doing nice things on trees uh, if we just respect what the tree is doing. So this is another example of reconfiguration of uh, of, uh, of a branch of a tuya uh, you, if you can see uh, this is the trees attached on the on the on the top of the of the room so it's not a real configuration but it looks like how the tree changed the, to the photosynthetic phase resting to the aerodynamic phase under the wind and this is a, it's very important to understand that the trees uh, modify the shape to reduce the wind the wind effect no we and we can see Every time we see wind on trees, how the shape, normal shape of the trees change to reduce this, uh, uh, to change the shape and get this uh, aerodynamic factor. We can see in palms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, no? So at the end, and also uh, uh, if you see the sequoia, doesn't look like have this aerodynamic shape, but we don't we don't get the shape until we have the wind. So the trees know more or less that uh, the aerodynamic factor is important, and all the trees are close to the parabola or hemisphere that is the most effective uh, 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 shapes or volumes to, to reduce the, 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 the force of the wind. If we make an easy calculation of a tree, a, a theoretical tree, that we only modify the, the, um, the aerodynamic factor on without changing the uh, shape and the area, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, what we can see is that if we break or we... Uh, mm, deformate or we change the dynamic factor of a tree, the moment of the forces in the base of the trunk increase dramatically. So really there are a, a big effect of how the tree manage dynamically the wind. 
Yeah. Um, these are different shapes of uh, geometrical uh, mm, things that have different aerodynamic factor. And you can see how it changed from 1 to 0 0.05, the most effective. And this, the, the tree really knows all this information and works to find out what is the way to be the, the, the most aerodynamic way. These are two trees. This is uh, Araucaria Araucana. It's a very um, old tree, primitive uh, tree that have a special shape. But look, when it's young, the shape is more or less the, the equal, like uh, the tree that you have in the in the, in the the right side. It's a Quercus, uh, Quercus uh, robur. It's oak, English oak. And look, the shape are the same because the reason of this shape is not the genetical expression. Uh, the reason of the shape is the dynamical factor. So the tree knows exactly what is the, the shape that uh, the tree needs to be uh, most effective. And this is well explained by the, this tool of MATEC, that is multi-tool, that explains how the trees uh, um, use these angles to reduce the force of the wind. So, um, of course, sometimes you can say, OK, this tree doesn't fit okay, in, the, in the angles, but it's not true, really. The, the angles are the same, but the orientation of the of the angles are in a different, different way, but the tree knows exactly what it means to be uh, uh, effective on, on managing the winds. And all the tree that we can look for, it's using this formula, these angles, really to be effective. And we can change the tree, change the continent, change the species, tropical, uh, north, south, and all the trees go and get this special shape to, to be uh, efficient. This tree doesn't have a special wind to, that deforms the, 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 the crown, but when the tree is very high in one direction, the tree makes special, special uh, uh, adaptations of the shape to be really, really, really effective. And until if you analyze trees that are in the these zones with highly winds in the same direction, you can find out that the aerodynamic factor that these, these trees are getting is, are close to the drop of water. And the shape of a drop of water have an aerodynamic factor of 0 0.05. So it means that the force of the winds is being multiplied by 0 0.05 of a theoretical uh, uh, aerodynamic factor. So really, really, really the tree, it's able to reduce almost to zero the force of the wind. And we can see these extraordinary trees in nature where we can get these special shapes no, of flag shapes that uh, is the same tree, uh, the, both images are the same tree. And you can see how, if you look the tree uh, from the direction of the wind, uh, it's like a wing and have a special shape that is very important to preserve. So this tree is have the perfect shape to be efficient on biomechanic. And this is something that uh, some people doesn't want to understand in some cases and think this is a mistake tree or a, a tree with problems. Really, it's the efficient tree and it's, uh, it's grown that direction to be really uh, 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 to reduce the cost of being, of being uh, uh, too much, uh, invest too much on biomechanics. No? So this is a, a nice picture of Ferrini that also asking what happened with this kind of trees. No? This is a perfect tree. This is the, is the cheapest tree to, 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 to be in the position that the tree is there. So so when we analyze trees, we have to find out what is the wind direction, what is the adaptation that the tree is making. This is a, a monumental tree in Portugal. It's a, a big lidodendron. And if you look the tree from the di wind direction or the perpendicular, the wind direction, you get these two, these two crowns there of the same tree that have only one, can have more or less about one third less or more of the of surface area, depending of the of the of the of the the direction that you see, no? I don't know how, okay, here, okay. Um, what is uh, Alexander to draw on the images? Because I'm not habituated with the... Uh, uh, how I can draw in the images? Do you know how? You want to uh, draw into the images? Yeah. Can I do it or in, with teams or not? Uh, I'm not sure. I uh, yeah, think it okay. would have to. I find it. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, do you have no. it? No. No. There are a pencil here. Not. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, I will go on with the camera, doesn't matter, uh, with the okay. explanation. Okay. 
normally I drown on on these pictures to explain this better, but uh, okay, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so if you see these trees, you can find out that the the shape of the tree is not really aerodynamic. So the tree have problems in during the life for retrenchment, for growing, for uh, answer to breaking that lose this aerodynamic factor. In these moments, the tree has a problem where uh, and are branches that are too much exposed or can be too much exposed to the winds and this can produce breaking on, on, on the future. So, um, or, or, or our work like an arborist is knowing the when we make evaluation of trees, we have them understand that the exists the aerodynamic factor. There are a special shape that makes the tree be more efficient. And we have to detect trees that are out of this aerodynamic factor. And we have to correct by pruning to uh, help trees to be more efficient on the wind effects. So uh, in this tree, you can see it or not, there are a, a nice answer and a nice construction of the dynamic factor in three in three levels. Eh? Any branch has this dynamic factor are, and have the same shape that matic the screws perfectly. No, this is a, a tree that don't have a, a, a clear uh, uh, optimization of the crown. When you see trees that uh, from the outside looks like there are no optimization of the crown. Normally, when you go inside, it's because there are some uh, bad works doing do it on the tree. In this case, it's a tree that has a, a hard pruning, so the, the growth uh, grows very very fast. No, in order to react to the pruning, and this tree is dif it's, it's difficult for them to get this dynamic shape. No, but there can be another reason. This is a monumental tree that begins to lose branches and, re and lose totally the dynamic factor. It's very important to know that the dynamic factor is based on the compaction of the crown. Uh, imagine that you buy a Ferrari and to make it more aerodynamic, you begin to make to drill holes on the surface of the Ferrari. And uh, the, the everybody knows that the Ferrari it's it's good on aerodynamics because it's very compact. So the tree works in the same in the same way. Trees wants to be compact to reduce the effect of the wind. If we open the crown, uh, what we are doing is normally destroying this aerodynamic factor. This tree is already break it. It breaks two weeks ago in a hard, uh, hard uh, wind uh, storm that we have it. But I think that these problems of the structure has uh, collaborated on, on losing that tree. This is another case of a, of a tree. of a, It's a singular alineation of eucalyptus in the coast of Mediterranean Sea. And the uh, technician of this city is uh, uh, very uh, proud of these trees and he want to protect it because people want to cut it because they are too much big. And and what this guy do in the last 15 years, it's cleaning the tree inside to reduce the force of winds. Really what this, this guy has been making is increase the force of the wind in the branches because when you break this shape, special shape on the trees, you increase the force of the wind. And when the tree goes uh, when the when the wind comes what it makes is not close the structure it's open the structure and increase the lever arm on any one any, any one of the uh, of the branches so when we have also some cases uh, like this drone shows when we lose a tree the other tree that remains not mostly don't have this aerodynamic factor because it's, it was thinking to have uh, uh, to have it through the other, the other, the other tree. So, in this situation, we can have a very, very uh, 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 dangerous trees because the aerodynamic factor is is changed dramatically. If we combine less aerodynamic factor and weight together, that we explained before, we have a, a branches that have more wind that is uh, uh, normal and more weight that is normal. If the lateral is laterality, it's very important. This, uh, this is uh, related to individual trees, but not all individual trees uh, use this special shape. Only the group of, t of trees uh, use the same angles and make a, a collective crown to protect one to the others. And when, when we analyze small forests, we can see that this, this the same angles that it's applied to one tree, it's applied for a lot of trees together. And and we can have to recognize that in this small forest of pines, all the trees work to make the special shape. In some cases, when we work in forest, some people want to put 
to cut out the most lateral or want to cut uh, some trees that don't like it. But really, if you look the, the, the this uh, group of trees in this uh, about the dynamic behavior we have to understand that all the pioneers that have that, that are here are working together to have this special shape if we cut one of these uh, of these pioneers because we don't like it we are going to break this special shape so when we look we have you can you have to see that all the trees together make this a special collective crown that are very effective on working against the wind. This is a, a, another uh, picture. You have uh, this special shape again that the trees produce to fight against the wind. And if we compare this shape with the wind uh, 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 behavior, we will see that uh, normally the trees doesn't invent nothing. What they do is just following what nature of the wind makes. If we make a combination of both pictures, we can see how this forest of plane tree it fits perfectly on the of the of the drown that the, the cloud eh, it's made by the wind eh, uh, um, um, when it, it stops for the for the for the mountain. No, so when we analyze trees, we have to analyze trees. From this point of view, because the tree is very, uh, uh, it's very thin in the details to really fits on this situation, and we can see some cases that some tree goes out from the shape. And if we are making risk analysis, we have to find to understand that these tree that go out from this special and optimization are in more risk than the other ones. In some cases, not because uh, uh, something happened, like, for example, this tree is dying on the right side. So when the, if somebody cuts this tree because it's, it's going to, to, to be dead, the, the other tree has a problem or a dynamic factor. So it means that we can lose branches uh, as fast as we, have, we cut the tree. No? Also, when we analyze um, population parks of, of trees, we have to really um, find out what is the impact of the winds on every one of the trees that we have in that park. And you see this park uh, in the north of Spain, you have this uh, more or less a level of the forest, but we have this eucalyptus growing more, more uh, uh, higher than the other one. So this tree re receives a big uh, impact of winds compared to the rest of us. So that's a way uh, looking for the aerodynamic factor that we recommend really uh, uh, when we analyze especially population of trees and we can use now the Google uh, tool that it's really impressive with the 3D to analyze the shape and understand how the, 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 the forest make these uh, special uh, uh, adaptations and we can use it, this information to work to help trees to be more optimized on, on, on wind management. You can see on the, on the, on the left these uh, lateral Mm, branches of the of a forest of plane trees that has not a, a really nice uh, uh, um, optimization and now we are working on the pruning and what we, we try to do is make a, a straight line to don't let some branches be out of the line of the crown that uh, makes that the wind goes freely in one direction without being going inside inside the the, the crown of the trees so Wind aerodynamics is very important, eh? but also when we analyze trees, we have to understand that the, the winds is one of the most important effects on trees. So if you make risk assessment, one of the steps that you have to do is try to find out what is the wind conditions in your place where the tree is. So this is a map of a spine with the different uh, uh, directions and uh, intensities of wind. And so it's very important to make risk assessment to work on at at that level, but not only general, but also local. So we have to find out the tree is in this in this situation. The wind comes from that direction. This is the roses rose of wind that we have in that tree, and this is the only way to really understand what is the impact on trees. Um, also, about talking about the the wind, we have to understand that there are attenuation of of wind effect depending on the whole how uh, uh, big are the obstacles on the soil. In, in, in the case of the cities, we know that the, the wind goes inside the cities in attenuation that can be very high. So we don't, you don't expect big winds on the center of the city. Uh, if you look again, this wind impact on these buildings, you can see that again, the, the wind is making this special shape. So the, uh, again, you can see how nature express that. Also, 
when we make risk analysis, um, we have to be aware also in all situations. This is a simulation of a, of a hill uh, in the direction of the wind. And this small program is not really uh, precise on, on mathematics, but uh, show us how uh, a shape of a, of a hill can increase in certain points the impact of the wind. And this is uh, quite important because in some cases we analyze trees that have been really fell down and we don't are not able to give a reason why. And uh, and some in some in some situations the the differential impact of the of the wind is the reason why the trees are are, are falling down. This is a case where we are we work in the five five seven years ago, I don't remember exactly, there was a, a, a work, uh, a study made for a, for a city where the, a lot of trees fell in one zone of the, of the, of the, I don't know if you can see my mouse, no, but uh, in one zone of the park, the tree were felling more fast than the other zones. And uh, uh, the, the, the technician of the city asked us why these trees are felling in that direction, what you can uh, do about that. So, our first uh, hypothesis was that the soil uh, deep on some places of the park was too much, uh, too much uh, as, as, as small. So, and we just check with a special bar all the park, trying to find out the, the soil, the, the soil deep. But we really didn't find differences between the where the trees are where where are uh, the trees fell down and the trees where are not felling. So we go a little bit further and we. we begin to uh, evaluate the, the the zone related to uh, wind force and wind impact no you you, you can see now the, the 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 same park look at with the with the google with the profile of the of the of the of the small mountain where the park is and this is the zone when all the trees were fell uh, 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 were lose it on on the last two two three years no uh, okay it looks like uh, uh, um something on the environment was uh, working on 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 this on this felling and we make again this simulation we uh, drown these buildings that are uh, uh, to the right uh, to the left of the zone of, of breaking of the trees and we can uh, with this simulation we understand that the wind on that point can be three times bigger than the normal wind so in that case, as we explain that the reason why the trees were felling in that zone are only explained, but the, the, the impact of the of the wind was higher, much, much, much higher than the rest of the zones. So this is nice because uh, if you can give, give an explanation why the trees are felling, uh, then you can uh, really uh, try to fight uh, to, to protect the rest uh, of the trees or to or at least the people uh, when have a, a um, explanation on why the, the things happen doesn't ask you for cutting trees without any uh, uh, options. No, when we look at the trees, uh, we that fell down, we can see that there are no really defects inside. Mm -hmm. It's important to know that. A lot of trees without defects are felling in our cities, and some people just say, "Okay, it's just casualty," and it's not. Normally, it's these kind of situations of weight, uh, weight wind, uh, aerodynamic factor that works together. So, perfect trees have also the chance to uh, to be destroyed if the wind is big enough. Another point that uh, I think is very important when we analyze uh, uh, tree mechanics, but not in the reaction zone in the optimization zone is to understand that the, the wood is, uh, has a, a big anisotropy. What it means anisotropy, it means that the material of the wood, it's really different depending on the situation where the tree is growing. So every cell of, this, of the wood has a reaction depending on the tension, compression, and uh, uh, stresses that receives. And if you look at a normal tree, you can detect that there are a lot of zones with a different uh, influence, weights, winds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, for any situation of the of the tree structure, we have a specialized uh, 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 adaptation on the on the uh, wall of the cells. That's why when we let some trees dry out uh, in in the place we, what we get is uh, these breakings no these uh, ex expressions of the different tensions of the tree that appears and you can look at this on the on the big trees or but also uh, in the branches what you have on the uh, right uh, in the bottom right uh, uh, sorry the bottom left 
it is a branch of sequoia. What you can see in the middle of the branch is the, the fiber, the neutral fiber that separates, uh, separates tension from compression. If you see how the, the wood, it breaks after being uh, uh, dry, you can see that the, the tension, it breaks every one centimeter. No, the cracks on the tension side is every one centimeter. And if you look, the cracks on the wood on the compression side is every two, three centimeters. This explains how the, the really the wood are made in a really special conditions and not the top and the and and the and the, the bottom sides of this branch work totally different. Uh, and of it means that the support and it's able to support different efforts, uh, different stresses, and not the, the, the opposite one. This is um, a small branch of eucalyptus that we cut in a pruning, and it's it's a uh, 15 centimeters. Uh, uh, long and uh, 10 centimeters wide so really it's a small branch but it, this is the four sides of this small branch and what you are I, we put out the bark of this branch and we, what you can see here is the bezels that the cambium produce we know that the cambium modifies the direction of the bezels uh, based on based on the auxins patterns so and the auxins patterns I, are made by the parenchymatical cells that detect the mechanical stress. So the four sides of this branch, that it's, I repeat again, 10 centimeters of diameter, have four totally different patterns of growing the vessels. So it means that this small branch has incredible change on the stresses, mechanical stresses. And this is very important to understand that the tree reacts uh, almost uh, uh, to the cell level to uh, optimize the capacity, the mechanical capacity of one of the uh, of every cell. This is a small drown of a, of a tree. We know tension, we know compression. And for every point, the tree is with the mechanical sensing, feeling what's happening with the environment, if the weight is too much, if the wind is too much, and reacts uh, strategically in any point. This is the uh, explanation that uh, has to be uh, taken into account when we analyze trees. This is a, a monumental tree that we have had in Spain, uh, but now we, we lose it uh, five years ago because uh, the tree has a lot of uh, a lot of problems, eh? some decay, uh, cavities, and a lot of problems. But we have uh, managing the tree during ten years, and one of the days the the council. This is a private. It's a private uh, house. One of the days. The council decided that the trees in front, in the square in front of that of that garden, were too much big. This is something that uh, still happens in Spain. People are a little bit crazy with the trees, and they decide to cut down the plane tree because they think they are too much. They want to arrange all the park uh, below, so they cut the branches. No? And this is what happened with the tilia uh, 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 one month later. So there was a on protection of the tree, the tree was mm, producing a capacity on the wood. You know, every cell of the wood has the special capacity related to the situation of the of the environment. When the when the when the mm, the people of the council cut uh, or prune hard the trees, that the tree uh, the tilia. Uh, find out that the wind exists because they didn't know it before and uh, and fell down. No, this is the Google map of the uh, here is the, where is the tilia? Sorry, here is the tilia. No, and after the pruning, and this is the uh, the space that the tilia lives uh, after. No, we have seen we have seen this uh, this picture in the beginning talking about how the tree reacts reducing the wind. Yeah. Um, so this is the tree that we have saw before, explaining that the tree re reduced the, the 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 weight, and this is uh, two two years later. So the tree breaks down. But the reason that the tree it breaks down is not because the reaction of the tree was good fighting against the weight. It's because they uh, make a selection of the trunks on that on that forest. So what makes the breaking of that tree is will really, is really that mm, that this is the the of the of the to the new situation. I'm going to go fast. Um, I'm just going to uh, ex uh, explain that this is another uh, important 
way the trees reduce the impacts of the wind. This is how what Ken James explains about uh, uh, resonance and damping effects. I don't want to be because I think everybody knows all this situation, but. Ken James explains very good how natural trees uh, damp, uh, make a damping on the resonance, and this helps to the trees to be more efficient on on on, on mechanics. Mm, the people that prune trees too much, what it it really makes is uh, increase the, the the resonance on branches, and and this explains some cases why these branches are falling down. But it's not clear. This is a, a, a pull and release test that we do in a Pinus pinea and look that uh, these special trees don't have a, really a damping effect. So not all the natural trees react in the same direction. Mm. Damping is very important. So all the, the big buildings have these damping uh, uh, tools. This is a, a damping uh, system on a big building in North Korea and South, South Korea. And it's very important that for that buildings to have this damping system to really avoid the, these buildings go down. Okay, uh, last step that I'm going to uh, explain, it's about uh, uh, slenderness. Mm, slenderness is uh, a characteristic of the tree. I don't want to be, because I'm out of time, sorry. But uh, slenderness or roughness is a proportion between high and diameter, but explains very good how some branches uh, are, uh, are more, uh, more uh, safe or less safe, depending his coefficient of slenderness. What I want to uh, explain is that some, in some cases, it's our prunings who change the conditions of roughness or slenderness in trees. And mostly it happens in cities. This is tropical trees. But when we make this kind of pruning, we produce slenderness on trees. And what we have in the uh, later on is not natural really trees where the diameter of the base of the branches doesn't increase because of the prunings and we have a lot of rankings of, of, of trees just because we modify the slenderness of the branches through our pruning. Um, these are trees that have a, 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 a a, back, a bad situation produced by pruning that uh, uh, looks for some people, that doesn't look like, like natural but the people uh, respect the, the, the top of the tree etc. No? But these are artificial trees really that we produce pruning and the, these trees with a uh, high level of slenderness has a big problem when the winds are so hard no but look when you see the some drowns still on the or or uh, or um, pruning books still explain that the trees have to be cleaned inside and what the cleaning in of the trees produce is a high slender uh, branches and this it means weak trees mm -hmm. and it is well known, uh, all the people make this kind of pruning that produce slender branches, constant slender branches. So what we have at the end is uh, weak trees that if, 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 you, if we uh, uh, add to this slenderness, uh, uh, low uh, aerodynamic factor and uh, laterality of the weight, we have a lot of branches falling on our cities. This is something that we don't know what the people are doing, but this modifies totally the strategy of the trees. And uh, we have to avoid putting our systems of thinking what the trees are. So I'm sorry, uh, I, I still I have been less than five minutes, but what I try to explain too much fast, uh, fast perhaps, or with, my, with bad English, that the combination of weight, aerodynamic behavior, wind force, slenderness, tissue adaptation, and resonance explains uh, with a lot of cases uh, a lot of failings of the branches. Uh, sorry if I'm not able to explain really good what I was trying to do. Thank you very much for your passage. We thank you, Gerard, for your amazing presentation. We gained so much knowledge from you, and I'm pretty sure we have to make second part with you, uh, definitely, because it wasn't definitely enough time for sharing what you can share with us. Um, I would like to ask if anyone has uh, questions, uh, there is a, a space for question and answers in the next to the chat. And if you can see it, you can write your questions into the chat. We will get to them right after the second presentation, so don't hesitate to share them with us. And I think it's time for me to introduce our second speaker. 
Andre Kolarik, uh, can you please uh, start sharing um, your presentation and I will quickly um, introduce you to our uh, participants of our webinar. So he's the CEO and co-founder of Arbo Technologies, where he has been focused on product management of our flagship product Adbian. Uh, his work is centered on using modern technologies uh, to ensure the safety and longevity of trees. Andre, can you maybe try your microphone if we can hear you? Can you hear me? Can you see my presentation? Yes, perfect. I can see it. Thank you. So thanks for introduction. Thank you, Gerard, for a great presentation. I've learned so many more reasons why it's not a good idea to cut adult trees in the cities because we just don't know the end effect it could have on its surrounding. So, so thanks for that. Yeah, as for my presentation, I'm uh, gonna show you what we are building. It's a product called Adbian. Uh, we will go very briefly to what it does, how it works, because I have uh, another two guest speakers for today who will really briefly show their case studies or an experience with Adbian or on specific trees, one from Amsterdam, one from Croatia. So I hope uh, it's going to be interesting for you. Uh, so the basic concept of Adbian uh, is that we are building um, tool to collect advanced tree data. Uh, we want to build something that enables you to collect the data even without expensive hardware, which is often limitation of why arborists cannot uh, get uh, new technologies that could help them analyze the trees. So we are basing it uh, mostly on a mobile device. And we are trying to enhance the arboriculture knowledge with technology because I think it's uh, unfortunately unrealistic to uh, know for each uh, tree consultant as much, uh, for example, as Gerard does about tree biomechanics and other stuff. So we are trying to pack it in one, one app that will help you to assess uh, assess all necessary. Uh, the end goal of the of the um, this approach we have is to reduce adult tree cutting because uh, a lot of adult trees are cut down just because of excessive caution or because not enough understanding of, of the data or of the tree. So we are trying to eliminate this with more precise data. So the basic principle is that we collect the data and model the trees in 3D space and calculate the wind load, how the wind load is influencing the tree, and we are calculating uh, the uh, yeah uh, the safety factor and the tree's behavior. Uh, we are using uh, three technologies combined to do this. First of them is photographical analysis. Uh, so the inputs of the software are two photos of the whole tree and three photos of the stem with three species to uh, give us um, the, the data on wood material properties and coordinates to give us the data on the wind zones. Uh, and with this, uh, we are able to better, better model the tree um, with also, you know, calibrated photography. We cannot uh, calculated from all photographies but as I said we don't have that much time to go in depth today so if you are interested in how this all works I would recommend to watch uh, our first webinar recording which we will be sharing later uh, and also we are implementing a scanning of a stem uh, which is fortunately uh, you don't have to buy again additional hardware you can just use your iphone or ipad pro because apple is unfortunately the only provider that started putting lidar sensors in their electronics so it's very fast and convenient and it enables you to scan the tree very nicely uh, i have a video here to share maybe it will be lagging a little bit but the basic principle is that you just come to the tree point your phone at it and uh, you are just trying to get rid of all these colorful points uh, on the um, on the stem and it's gonna create the 3d shape file for you uh, we are aiming to do this assessment you know around three to four minutes per tree so it is something that should be fast and doesn't take you too much time with the tree 
and the end result can be um, shape, for example, like this. So very precise uh, 3D representation of this of this tree. How we work then with the data, we basically, as I said, model the tree in 3D space and we are calculating the tree stability on each profile, uh, each stem profile every 10 centimeters. And we indicate which tree profile is the weakest and there we, there we uh, calculated the safety factor. Uh, it's possible also to include, as you saw, open cavities. Uh, so this can give you also the information on how how big the cavities are uh, are really. In last steps, we can combine this approach with device tests. Uh, most of you prob probably know sonical tomography. This is one of the one of the providers that can uh, that can uh, help you to assess the tree. And the output, the tomogram, tells you how the tree looks from the inside, if there is some kind of cavity or so on. But as Gerard was also talking about the outside, what is what uh, what is holding the tree the most? You know, uh, the uh, the further the wood is from the center, the higher it has effect on a tree stability. And the tomographies unfortunately oversimplify the uh, geometry and the shape of the of the tree. So the inputs, you know, you just add the output of the tomography. And what we can do with it is that we overlap it with the precise 3D scan. This is very fast, a very fast case study from Netherlands where we overlapped it uh, tomography with 3D scan and we find out that there was uh, actually 18% more healthy wood that we uh, we get only based on uh, based on tomography. So the difference can be uh, quite significant. I would say even few percentage points could be different from cutting the tree and leaving it standing. So um, this this is actually quite was actually quite surprising even for us. And yeah, so that's that's. Uh, very quickly on what what we are developing we already have around 130 pilot users in nine countries around europe and some in the united states which with which we are testing this technology in different use cases and we hope we can provide something very valuable for everyone very soon but the first uh, first case study I have today is actually not on uh, saving the trees, but about the business sustainability, because I believe that when we are bringing something completely new, uh, there has to be like financial incentive for everyone that it works. And our thinking class uh, lies there that if there is more analysis, which can be uh, presumably more expensive, it should reduce the tree cutting. Uh, on this, we will have two, two other speakers. We will discuss with them uh, on other case studies um, because cutting and replacing an adult tree is the most expensive thing you can do with it. And um, uh, the last presumption on which I have the case study is that experts using EdBN should be able to, to charge more but you know to give give more in in this regard uh, so we uh, been able to pilot test it at bn with one czech uh, company which have around 20 consultants we uh, they use tomograph and pulling test as well uh, we can combine the at bn with pulling tests as well and they started piloting it in 2021 and uh, we fully implemented it in 2023. So it took some time for us also to develop. Uh, but the numbers of Airbnb news were actually they started on only 5 and 11 percent of the population then did tomography and pulling tests on and they progress up to 80 and 90 percent of the population. So there uh, was a quite interest on it. Uh, what it did to the revenue, uh, it increased revenue per tree uh, for the for the company for around 30 percent. But the most interesting number is because when we reduce the um, the cost associated with uh, use of Airbnb, uh, it only takes you three minutes per tree. 
and uh, they've been able actually uh, slowly increase their profit margin on trees using these uh, using these hardwares on the tree. So, you know, this is something which is not often discussed uh, with a new technology, if it actually makes sense for everyone using it. So we've been very happy to run these numbers on real company and to check if it makes sense for them to use it. But, uh, you know, uh, Arborist or Arboriculture Company is just one uh, of the components in the in the chain. So I have here um, another guest, uh, which is Ifo Lut from um, from Amsterdam Municipality, uh, with which we run a, a quick uh, or small pilot on several trees. Uh, so I would like to invite you, Ivo. You can you can um, activate your camera, microphone, and start sharing the presentation on on our small pilot. Thank you, uh, Andre. Um, I'm going to try to share my presentation. Hello and welcome, uh, everyone. It's nice to be here. I am Ivo Lute. I'm a tree manager and tree consultant with the city of Amsterdam, of course, in the Netherlands. And I would like to tell you short about the trees in Amsterdam and how we conduct uh, the tree inspections. Uh, there's too little time to go in details, but that's uh, fine for now. Uh, of course, the reason uh, why I'm here, we've also recently uh, conducted a pilot on five trees with Edbien. And uh, Andre introduced already uh, something. Uh, now, as you, you can see, we have got a lot of nice trees uh, along the canals of uh, Amsterdam. We've got uh, about 300,000 trees um, in Amsterdam. That's uh, only the trees counted in streets, canals and avenues. And we've got also uh, trees in, in parks uh, like that, but not every tree is in our management uh, system. So we've got um, as you see, this is a screenshot of our, uh, yeah, I call it our registration uh, system. Uh, every single tree in Amsterdam is registered in this system. Um, we've got uh, a visual inspection about 100,000 trees every three years and 35,000 trees every year. And that are the trees with that defect. Um, Uh, my role in this is um, in the tree management is to oversee uh, the technical inspection of the trees uh, conducted by our contractors. And our contractors are all uh, European tree workers or European tree technicians. Um, our contractors are using different tools, uh, the simple tools like the hammer, the probe, for the technical part, we use the pikers or the or the arbitum also, also the resistor graph, and uh, sometimes you're doing the pulling uh, tests. And of course, there is a reason why we do uh, our three inspections. We've got, uh, of course, uh, the Netherlands is a very uh, windy most of the time. Um, it looks like uh, yeah, storms getting heavier, so that's one of the reasons uh, we do all these inspections for tree safety, but of course also for tree preservation. Um, we did five trees for the Edwin pilot. And I want to highlight uh, these two ones, these two uh, elms. These are the Ulmus Hollandica Belgica. These two are part of the Edwin pilot. And um, we did it, uh, I think, uh, two or three months uh, ago. And uh, also elms are the most common species uh, in Amsterdam. So that's uh, our choice because they're also it's got the monumental uh, status. So that's because we uh, I picked uh, these two one out. If you see uh, 
Chris uh, can sometimes uh, surprise us. Uh, I think uh, everyone here is uh, familiar with uh, the MOTEC uh, standard. And in my opinion, it's just a rough indication of the trunk strength. And uh, therefore, we, we, uh, we are searching for more precise calculation of the remaining wall. And so uh, we would like to see what the actual remaining wall is uh, without having uh, to use a calculator and perform a complex calculation based on the SIA for each tree. So that's uh, the first reason uh, we started the uh, pylon with, uh, with AdBN. In this tree, you can see, excuse me, this tree, you can see uh, clearly uh, a decay. Uh, that's uh, one of the recent reasons why it's uh, included in the pilot. And uh, this tree uh, has also been previously examined with a sound tomogram. You already see, you can see uh, clearly at the inside of the tree. But um, the remaining wall uh, is just uh, based on the on the MOTIC norm, on the MOTIC calculation. And the previous research uh, commenced reducing the canopy of this tree by 20%. To getting it uh, uh, to getting a safety factor. Um, after we scanned it with uh, with the Adbian, uh, the scan indicates a safety coefficient of 154%. So we didn't have to uh, prune. So that that's very nice. Uh, also cosmetic, but also uh, the money and also uh, yeah, uh, to to preserve the tree. Uh, like uh, Gerard already uh, told us, uh, you better not prune, even if it's uh, only if it's really necessary, because of the uh, because of the the cosmetics of the tree and also the dynamics of the tree. So it's better not to prune. So after the ADBN scan, we didn't have to prune it. The second tree, uh, there was no decay uh, inside. So, uh, however, this tree does have an internal uh, issue that was detecting using the visual tree assessment by tapping the base of the trunk with just a hammer. And that decided us to make a acoustic tomogram. And uh, then you can see this. So there is not very much uh, remaining wall. Um, so the previous research uh, advised to reduce the tree by 40%. So you can imagine uh, the tree looks uh, not that nice anymore. Uh, also with heat distress, uh, you better don't. And um, luckily, according to the measurements with Adbian, uh, the canopy should be reduced by three meters to safely preserve the tree. So uh, three meters is a big difference with the uh, 40% crown uh, reduce. So the tree uh, stays nice and we can preserve the tree with his most of his, uh, of his canopy. And this is my last, um, my last idea, my last PowerPoint, last sheet. Uh, we've got some problems, uh, problems in Amsterdam, as you can see. Uh, it's of course very busy, uh, busy city, a lot of bikes, a lot of cars, uh, everything around the tree. So uh, yeah, it. Um, the picture serves a reminder that expected trees in Amsterdam could be in a challenge even uh, visually. So that's it. It was uh, short, I think five minutes. I think that's enough. Yeah, thank you, Eva, for sharing very much. Yes, I quit sharing. Yes, I already quit sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing this. And the last speaker who's coming up is Goran from Croatia. Please, Goran, you can activate your camera, microphone, and start sharing the screen. 
Hello, everybody. My name is Goran. Thank you for your patience for waiting me for the last presentation. I would like to share a case study of assessing the stability and ecological value of trees uh, in city of Varaždin. Uh, so very shortly about me, I am a CEO of a small company, arboriculture company in Croatia, Urban Ishumari. It's called Urban Foresters. I'm a certified uh, veteran tree specialist. I work also uh, for EAC. I'm part of the group who developed the European Arboricultural Standards at Gerard. And uh, we are currently conducting with uh, Arboriculture Academy from Czech Republic and EAC uh, Erasmus project for bringing the European tree worker in uh, Southeastern Europe. Also, I'm quite uh, excited about Adbian and we are using it for some time. So I would show you what we did in this city of, uh, you see it on the map, it's in the north of Croatia. And uh, the city hort horticulture company Parkovi Varaždin uh, contacted us for the project of tree assessment and tree preservation. The area is in one uh, very important city park. And here you can see the population of the trees that uh, we assessed. Um, so it was uh, all in all 21 trees. Uh, and this park is quite, uh, as I said, important and old. So on these pictures, you can see the site where we did the assessment. Uh, it's mainly on this uh, trees that are looking on the uh, roadside and some trees that are also on the park side. The biggest issue why uh, we, why the city uh, wanted to fell these trees uh, was because they wanted to renovate this pathway. You see these red arrows, they are pointing to the ruined uh, pathway, but is this really a reason to fell these uh, old trees? So the trees were already assessed by some other uh, experts and they all said the trees need to be felled. And the conclusion from the past reports was that trees were dangerous, unstable, or there was no point in preserving them. Uh, what was also unfortunate that none of these uh, experts used any of the diagnostic methods. So uh, the, they were really not uh, assessing the trees in the right way. The city also planned the excav excavation of the pathway and uh, so they decided that the root damage will be too big and the trees need to be felled and replanted with the young trees. So we offered them a different solution. And this was also with the use of Adbian. So uh, our assessment took place in July, 2023. We assessed 21 trees uh, with VTA. Uh, you saw them in the Check Trees app, how they are distributed. And then we scanned 15 trees and analyzed with Adbian level two and three. So we did the stem scan and also the dendrology plus with the uh, images that were uh, measured the distance uh, where they are taken. And 13 trees were analyzed with the uh, resistor graph. And on three trees, we did climbing inspection just to check what's with the higher canopy. And we also did the analysis of the tree ecological benefits and habitat structures on the trees. Uh, with the ecological benefits, it was very nice uh, to assess that these trees have a very big impact on the microclimate uh, of the, the street and park and how much uh, micro and macro particles they retain per year. So this was just one plus point why these trees should be preserved. So we did also the habitat structures on the trees with the catalog of uh, dendro microhabitats of Europe. And this was all very important so we can display the importance of the trees, uh, why we want to uh, preserve them and uh, evaluate uh, their uh, safety. So where did uh, Adbian uh, contribute to our report? 
the first thing that I would really like to stress out for from us as uh, Arborist consultants to the customer, and for also for me as a consultant, is the visual information. So the information from the cross let's cross cuts of the tree is very very nice because. Uh, when you have a cavity opens like this, it, it really gives you uh, a lot of imp information what is going on with this in terms of safety. And not only to me, but also to the to the customer that these cavities are sometimes not the weakest part of the tree. Uh, it's very uh, dependent of the geometry and the position of them on the tree itself. Also, what is a very nice and it was already uh, mentioned today a lot of times is pruning calculation and it is really easy even for the lay people or people who are not specialized in tree diagnostics to understand the impact of the reduction pruning and that we don't need to over prune the trees that we don't need to prune out of fear because one meter can already uh, significantly increase the safety factor. And for example, three meters is really, really a big uh, difference in uh, safety. And you know, if you tell people to prune just one meter or two meters, the usual reaction is that's, that's like nothing. They want to prune much more. And this is a very, very nice way how to describe why not to over prune? And what is the result of ADBN analysis for us uh, as a consultants? It's a very clear, clear communication to decision makers. Visual information is very comprehensive and easy to explain. And uh, all trees uh, were decided to be preserved as a result of this. And you really have to think that uh, usually the tree owners, especially in the cities, uh, these are not really people who understand deep uh, tree diagnostics. Uh, and this is very nice from at the end that I as a consultant can get very deep uh, information and also the people who are uh, not so specialized in tree diagnostics and biomechanics can also understand what we get from Adbian. Uh, one month uh, after the report, we had the biggest recorded storms in north of Croatia with uh, enormous uh, tree damage and also a big structural damage on the buildings and all the trees still stand on the site. And I'm really, really happy and we didn't do any pulling test on these trees because the budget didn't allow it. Usually I would do some pulling tests and we completely relied on uh, ADBN analysis and uh, none of the trees was damaged. The other result is also the ecological, uh, sorry, economical uh, and uh, the city of Farajdin had 16,000 euros prepared for tree removals and new plantings and the money was redistributed to the city horticultural company, Parkovi, to be used in tree care and green space management. So this was again a big win uh, for our green uh, department side because the money was uh, given again for the tree care and green spaces. And of course, the citizens are very happy that the trees were preserved and the city government has achieved a nice green project, which is always a big bonus for every city government. So thank you for your time. And if you have some questions about the case study, please ask them now, or you can even send the email. Okay. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I can see question in a chat, maybe if you want to answer it right now, uh, from David, I think. Would you like to answer it, Goran, now, or uh, uh, we will do... Alexandra, yeah. can you please read it? Because I cannot see the new question. I see the last yes. question from... Root Baker. So, yeah. oh, okay. Uh, there is a question: Are you pruning tr pruning 
three meters of the total canopy, or should I say reducing canopy by three meters? Okay, that's uh, I like your question, and that's a very common question. Uh, one thing, uh, just I will answer also, but what I like about Adbian that we get the pruning in meters and not in percent percentages, because then your question would be even more valuable. Uh, we prune three meters from the crown, uh, so you have to calculate what's what's the crown and not the tree height. So uh, it's it's always uh, referring to the, to the crown and uh, usually this reduction when we uh, calculate for the tree stability is uh, from uh, its uh, upper crown reduction because this gives the biggest impact. But you have really nice uh, things about tree pruning. If you go to the European tree pruning standard, this is very nicely explained how you do the upper crown reduction and that uh, you shouldn't do the boat reductions, so the lateral reduction and the upper reduction at the same time. So I always suggest if you have uh, questions about tree pruning, try to find them in the European tree pruning standard. We really tried to give uh, there some uh, answers to the questions. Perfect, thank you. And I see another question for you, I think, uh, from Aaron. Uh, and uh, it's, are you using the system in conjunction with the risk, risk assessment system? I think it's for you, Goran, as well. Uh, so, I, I I'm not sure wh what you mean by uh, risk uh, tree risk assessment. If you mean uh, truck or something like that or QTRA, we are not using it. Uh, I we just had a big discussion on this topic when we are developing the tree assessment standard for the whole Europe and. Uh, I am actually not using these methods on the individual trees. I like these methods for the tree population or the, for the site, uh, but on the individual trees, we don't use that uh, kind of uh, quantified uh, uh, tree risk assessment. Okay, thank you. And I think there is a question for Andre. Um, and if the app will be available to everyone, Zach is asking. Yeah, again, interesting question. Thank you for that. Uh, as I said, we are uh, currently piloting it, but it's uh, like open pilot. So if anyone of you is interested in trying it, you can just set up a call with us on uh, on our website at bn.com and we can definitely uh, let you in the app and to try it and to test it uh, for yourself. Uh, as for wide public release, um, I actually, I'm not sure. We were planning to release it early next year, but there is still, you know, uh, so many features we want to add and stuff like that. So, but yeah, hopefully it will be in the first half of next year. It should go uh, that it's downloadable for anyone and anyone can try it for themselves. Amazing. Uh... Gerard, would you like to share with us um, the discussion that is uh, going on in the chat, maybe? Would you like to talk about it more? I don't know, Alessandra. I think pruning is uh, a difficult thing, and I but my, my, my try to explain it in the lecture very fast, and I perhaps not in, in really good. It's that the tree has a lot of strategies to be ineffective, and uh, you have to be humble and try to really think a lot when we decide to prune a tree for the risk uh, 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 reasons. Of course, for the maintenance, we have to take care of the interferences between trees and cities and trees and you know the normal uh, function of the city. But uh, when we talk about reduction. 
and modifying the normal strategy of trees that we do very often and without taking care. Uh, we mostly um, recognize that uh, natural trees break less than city trees. And this is uh, something that we have to recognize that we are something that we are doing bad. So I think uh, have to be a little bit more humble, understand that tree make lots of things. And of course, bring it always there. But uh, I think we have to change a little bit the mind. But it's difficult to explain in five minutes a lot of information. So mm, next time. Yeah, next time for sure. <laughs> Thank you for your uh, answer. Um, I think there is no more questions in the chat. So I would just like to mention that there was some uh, messages about the recording. We will be sending it to everyone who checked it while you reg registered. And if you haven't checked this option, reach out to us and we will add you to the list. Uh, just send us your email where you want to receive the recording and we will definitely send it uh, after the webinar. So don't worry about it. And if there is no more questions, I would like to thank everyone who joined us today. And I think now I can share with you the topic and guest of our third webinar. So uh, our guest of third webinar uh, will be for you already known in this webinar, um, and it's Goran, who had the last presentation, and he will be joined by Bara Vojačkova, and the topic will be importance of precise geometry in trees biomechanics. I think it will be very uh, amazing topic to be discussed. So don't hesitate to join us. I will now share a link for registration so you can um, join before we will uh, share it on our social media. It's now in a chat. I will pin it so it's not it's not getting lost. Perfect. It will be on January 23rd. So uh, first month of the next year and we will start it together. So I'm very glad that we had such an amazing evening today with uh, all the speakers and participants. I would like to thank you all again and yeah, it's amazing to have such a community. Um, so don't forget to contact us or follow us on social media and uh, join our community we shared today with you.